What's up everybody and welcome back to the YouTube video. Uh, how's everybody doing? Great, thank you for asking. That joke doesn't get old, does it? Very old. We've been doing that joke on the channel for years now. Uh, so I hope you guys still appreciate it. Uh, so we're gonna be back in with our, I think it's our second second in the, the mini series of like how we're gonna grow specific body parts where we're gonna sit down and just break down exactly how I've done things in the past, how I've progressed things, but how you can progress them as well. So today's video is all about how to grow that back. How to grow those lats, how to grow the rhomboids, the traps, the thickness through the lower lats. Uh, and the things that I've done, because I think I have improved my back quite a lot. In fact, this is how I used to look and this is my back now. So you can see the big difference in the thickness, uh, the shape, the muscularity is much, much different. Um, and here's how I feel like I've done it. So the first thing I want to talk about is priming. Now, a lot of people struggle to connect to the lats. It's one of the most said things in my DMs. I really struggle to connect to my lats. What can I do? Now, this is where priming and activation comes in. So I actively have two or three sets at the beginning of every single session, um, you know, push legs, all those types of things, but specifically in pull, I have two or three sets at the beginning of my session that the goal is not to grow muscle, not to break down muscle, not to cause tension, but to just get some blood into the lats and to get the, the neurological connection firing and to get the lats firing. Um, so for me, I like to do a long rope pullover. Uh, whenever I'm doing a long rope pullover, I'm thinking about taking my lat through the full range of motion where you're fully extended at the shoulder. Yeah, you're coming all the way back and getting the lat fully short. Once you've gone through that motion, maybe 10 to 15 reps, maybe three or four sets, you've got blood work in there. You can kind of feel the pump a little bit. Like that's when I would start your session. And, and that has been one thing that has massively improved my connection to my lats, my, my, you know, my, what we call the mind to muscle connection. That's what's improved it. So just try doing some pullovers before you get in, get a little bit of a lap pump before you go in and then start your pulls and rows. Um, and I personally think you're gonna have a lot better time. So make sure you go away, do some activation and let me know how you feel about it in the next video. So another thing that I stopped doing, now this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but I stopped doing your traditional lat pull downs. What? You stopped doing pull downs for your lats? Well, how are you growing your lats then? Well, here's the thing. When we're talking about a traditional lat pull down, we're grabbing the bar, we're pulling down as far as we can go. You can see where my elbows are right now, right? Actually, a lot of that contraction is gonna be a rear delt. Yes, you're gonna have some lats because the lats have to, you know, part of their function is to, is to pull you this way. But one thing that I've completely changed in my routine is elbow positioning. So what we can do is, is just show you here. So lat pull down, I pull here. And all I think about now is, is I go to a neutral grip and I pull down even further, you know, because you've got an extra range of motion there. You can already see where my elbows are. If I go back into that traditional lat pull down position, elbows are, uh, relatively high, bring your elbows in, and, and you've got a much deeper range of motion. So instead of doing that, I haven't done a lap pull down in years now, maybe maybe 18 months plus. Uh, so instead of doing the traditional pull down, I'm doing either singles where we're thinking about driving the elbow down even lower, um, or even just like looping over some D handles over a traditional lap pull down bar, and then just pulling deeper into that muscle. And you're gonna find that the lat gets more contracted. So the lat is this long, you, you pull it in a lat pull down, it gets to here. You pull with your elbows in, it gets to here. So you've got an extra, whatever it's gonna be in that range of motion. I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy like 20, 30%, but you know, if there's a few percent here or there, deeper connection, I'm gonna take it. So stop doing your traditional lat pull downs, focus on driving your elbows down. Another thing that I started doing with my back training is focusing more on biomechanics um, and, actual, and actually the way that the lat works, where the lat is strong, where the lat is weak, and then trying to match my, my resistance profiles of the exercises. So you have a resistance profile, which is where the exercise or the machine that you're using is heavy or light. We call that the resistance profile. And we have a position that the lat or the muscle is strong or weak, we call that the strength profile. So all we're trying to do when we're looking to, to correlate these is just try and match it. So where the machine is really, really heavy, I want the, the muscle to be really, really strong. And where the machine gets light, I want that to be where the muscle gets weak. So when we're talking about a lat, uh, we know that we're actually pretty, we're pretty weak in the short position, we're pretty strong in the mid range, and we're pretty weak again here. So 
ideally you'd want a machine that starts a little bit easy, gets really heavy and then drops off again, which is why something like a Cybex row is really good because the way that the, the way the machine is developed and designed is that it gets like, it's like heavy and then it gets light. So it drops off as you get weaker. And this is why you might see me do things like a stood up hammer strength lateral raise where we're bracing with the non-working arm, we're stood up and we're actually changing the resistance profile of the machine by bringing it further away from the axis of rotation. And I found that matching these profiles allows my lap to, allows me to get more out of my lap, but it also just seems to just allow me to get a few more reps, a few more sets and, it, and, and a deeper contraction as well. So maybe you start looking at, at different exercises and how you can manipulate them, or even just looking at a machine and saying, right, this machine's just gonna get really, really heavy. There are some chain uh, rows that you might see where they just go from like super light to super heavy. That's the exact opposite of what we want in the lat. So you might find that when you're doing a row, you can do this bit really easy, but you physically can't pull this bit anymore. That's probably because it's got no drop off and you want to create that drop off as you move forward. The next thing is going to be, it's, it's going to be fairly obvious, but I still think that people get married to movements. And I think that the, the, the tip here is going to be pick exercises that work for you. You know, I know I've got some clients who, for whatever reason, <laughs> grow and feel strong and feel very, very safe in a, in a machine pullover. For me, like they fucking ruin my shoulders. Like they, they, it just, I can feel crunches and pops. It doesn't make me feel good. I feel like I'm pulling with my tricep and my rear delt a little bit and I'm like kind of curling over and, and, and uh, protracting at the shoulder a little bit. So I don't do them personally, but when I'm watching maybe one of my clients, for example, Alex, I don't think he's gonna be watching this, but Alex Kent, he loves a pullover. But the way he does it, he doesn't protract. He, he, he goes through the full range of motion. He's got more mobility at the shoulder and it looks and feels very good for him. So there's a very good case as why I'm doing something that you might not want to do and you might do something that I might might not want to do but what's important is is how well you can connect to that muscle so for me i love anything that's got a moving handle because a moving handle allows you to rotate at the joint it allows you to pull here it allows you to pull here it allows you to pull here which is why the nautilus pull down is probably my favorite exercise that you can do because it's free handling and and you can rotate a lot as well so pick exercises that you can connect with you know those exercises that you just go oh that felt good you know that is a really key it's a key indicator that that exercise is good for you. Um, you know, I see people that can deadlift and I can't really deadlift that well. So just really think about the exercises that you're choosing and if they do line up well, then choose them. So the next thing, um, potentially the final thing that we'll talk about today is a hip hinge. So when you are hinging at the hip and coming back up, that, that is a very key posterior chain movement. And I think for me, I am notoriously weak at that movement, which is why of all the things that potentially ha doesn't have the, the density that I would like, it's probably my lower and my mid back because I don't, I'm not super strong in that movement. Um, I can't really deadlift as much as I press, for example, which a lot of people would know that you should be able to deadlift more than you can press. Whether it's my biomechanics, whether it's how inconsistent I've been with that movement, or whether it is just that my biomechanics don't 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 work with that movement. Like there's there's more than one way to skin a fish, um, as they say. So I would focus on having a hip hinge within your exercise because a function of like the erectors, a function of that lower back is to go into hip flexion and extension. If you're neglecting a movement that the muscle is designed for, then you are cutting yourself short. You know. So for example. I know we're going off topic here, but for example, in a press, you know that the, the pec pulls the arm across the body, you know, so if you were to not do uh, a pec deck, for example, or a fly, you would be missing out on a movement of the pec. The same way for a, for a row or the back, I should say, which I probably should have started with. Uh, you do your horizontal row, you do a vertical pull, but you also have scapular retraction. You also have hip hinging. So I'd really recommend that when you're looking to design a program for your back that you take the lats and the erectors and the delts and the traps through their range of motion that they have designed for them. Um, and you have to consider about a back, there's, there's, there's probably the most probably the most variations. You know, you think you've got a shrug, you've got a pull where your scapula has to come back, you've got a vertical pull where your elbows come down, you've got, you know, an, you know, an erect, erector spinae where you're, you're coming through hyperextension. If you're not working through one of those movements throughout your, your pull workouts over the week, I would highly recommend finding an exercise that works within that motion. Uh, I'm just gonna finalize this uh, video off by saying, 
it's not going to work if you don't eat enough. It's not going to work if you don't train hard enough. It's not going to work if you're not consistent enough. So um, I'm making these videos with those prerequisites just being there. Um, and if they are, then I think if you implement three or four of these techniques, then you're going to massively improve your chances of, of growing your back. So that is how to grow your back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.